Hey there everyone, it's Mrs. Bailey and today we're going to be learning about seahorses. Now looking at this cover, I see a heart with an arrow going through it. I wonder why there's a heart on the cover of a book about seahorses. Well keep this in mind as we're reading, maybe it'll come into play somewhere and we can figure it out. So. We're going to read, and every now and then I will put my cursor down just like this, and that's so you can see where we are. So if you're lost, you can catch back up and follow along. I always like for you to follow along when we're reading. So we're going to jump right in. It says Seahorse. If you're looking for unique sea life, then congratulations, because in this book we'll be talking about seahorses, some of the most unique fish in the sea. Unique means different, but kind of awesome too. The name fits it perfectly, as its head looks a lot like the head of a horse, but its body has small, spiny plates from top to bottom. Its head does look a lot like the head of a horse, doesn't it? And you can kind of see the small, spiny plates going all the way down to the bottom. Seahorses are the slowest swimmers of all fish species, and they're found in an ocean's coastal waters. That's the part of the ocean that's closest to the land. It's more shallow water. They usually swim upright in seagrass beds, mangroves, and coral reefs. And over here, it shows the picture of a coral reef. It says it's made up of hundreds to thousands of tiny corals. Corals are marine animals, not plants. So they look a lot like plants, but they're actually animals. And we see a bunch of them, probably along with some sea anemone down here. They're really close together, which is what makes up the reef. When you have a lot of corals together, it makes up the reef. So you would see seahorses in places like this. You would also see seahorses in mangroves. And this entire page is the picture of a mangrove, but we can look at the bottom of it where it looks like trees or tree limbs are growing out of the ground or the seabed. And that's what a mangrove is. It's trees and shrubs that grow in warm, salty water. Guess what? Seahorses have no stomach. Therefore, food travels through their digestive systems very quickly. Can you imagine not having a stomach and trying to eat? So it says this means they're constantly eating in order to stay alive. They anchor themselves with their tails and with their long snouts they suck in plankton and small crustaceans, very small crustaceans, such as brine shrimp. They don't go hunting for their food, but rather they just wait for it to pass by, then they snag it. And here are some brine shrimp. And it says they're under a microscope. That means they're super tiny, but they would have to be for a seahorse to get it with its snout. See, that's now, that's tiny, isn't it? Seahorses also prefer to travel with their tails entwined. And when they find a partner, they often mate for life. It's kind of like a marriage. What's really crazy is that it's the male seahorse that gives birth to baby seahorses. The female seahorse can release up to 50 eggs into a pouch on the male's abdomen. That's the lower stomach area. And after about 25 to 30 days, the male seahorse will give birth to between five and 1,500 babies. So when it says their tails are entwined, that means they're kind of hooked together like that. The male is the boy. And usually we think of the lady as giving birth, but in this case, it's the boy, the male seahorse that gives birth. And they were talking about how, let's see, the female seahorse can release up to 50 eggs into a pouch 
on the male's abdomen. That is a brood pouch, and we can see it right here, and that's where the baby seahorses develop. And also, you see right here where the tail is around this limb? That's what they mean over here on the other side of the page when they said that they anchor themselves to something and then they snag food when it passes by. Well, that tail wrapped around that limb is the seahorse anchoring itself to something. Anchoring means it holds it down so it doesn't just float. When a seahorse meets its mate, the partners may begin up to an eight-hour courtship dance, which could include swimming side by side, changing colors, and spinning around. It's said that some seahorse partners will even greet each other every morning in this same way, except the dance will only last a few minutes rather than hours and hours. So, seahorses stay with the same mate their entire time, their entire existence. I wonder if that has anything to do with that heart on the first, on the cover. And also right here, we see courtship dance. It's in bold print. And if you've been with me in any of our other books, like the octopus or the jellyfish, you'll know that when it's in dark, bold print, that it's probably going to be a pretty important word and we should pay extra attention to it. So over here on this page, it says parts of a seahorse. So we see the eyes, okay, that's obvious. The snout, we were introduced to that on the previous page. That's what they suck up their food with. The brood pouch, it's way down here. They said it was on the lower abdomen, probably the beginning, the start of the tail. We see how the tail kind of starts right here. This is the tail. And this is a dorsal fin. So the dorsal fin is on its back right here. And over here on this page in bold print, we see where it says dorsal fin. That's what helps a seahorse move slowly forward. So that's what helps it move. This right here is a coronet on the top of its head. Over here in bold print, we see where it says coronet. It's a group of spines at the top of a seahorse's head. It's like a human fingerprint and that no two are the same. So that means that's the identifying feature that can tell every seahorse apart. No two seahorses have the same coronet on the top of their heads. It says, did you know? Because of their small spiny plates, seahorses do not have a lot of predators. That's in bold print, predators. Predators are animals that hunt them for food. So they don't have a lot of predators, why? Why do you think? What does it say over here? Because they're just too bony. Who wants to eat something with a lot of small spiny plates all over it? Their scientific name is hippocampus. Not hippos, but hippocampus. They can eat up to 3,000 brine shrimp a day. And remember, they have to. They have to constantly eat because they have no stomachs. Seahorses are able to look frontwards and backwards at the same time. Their eyes work independently of each other, so they have great eyesight. Independently means you know how we have to look at something? When we look at something, both eyes are looking at it at the same time. Say you're looking at whatever is in front of you right now. Say it's a pencil. Well, both of your eyes are looking at that at the same time. If your eyes could work independently of each other, that means one eye could look at the pencil while the other eye looked at your friend or the teacher or the desk or the sink or anything that's behind you. They could work separately from each other. That would be kind of cool, wouldn't it? Like an octopus, seahorses can camouflage themselves extremely well. 
and camouflage means blend in to look like their surroundings for protection. Over here, you see this seahorse? It does blend in with all of this coral or sea anemone or whatever that is around it. It looks just like that other stuff, doesn't it? So if a predator or if something that could eat it comes along, which we found out was not that many things, it wouldn't see the seahorse because it's blending in with its surroundings. Pretty cool. Do you ever wish you could blend in with your surroundings? I think we all do at some point in time. So guys, I hope that you enjoyed this book. I did. And until next time, I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.